Good morning guys, we are here in Naples. And you can't visit Naples without visiting Pompeii and Herculanum. Pompeii is a very famous city because in 79 AD, about 2000 years ago, it was buried alive by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. These cities have been frozen in time and give us a greater figuration of how was the life at the time. Off we go! But first, breakfast. made it to Pompeii. Fun fact, there were 20,000 people living here and they didn't know that the volcano Vesuvio was actually a volcano, they thought it was a mountain. So imagine the surprise when interrupted. I'm so excited, I'm fully geeking out. I've always wanted to come here. This is so amazing. It's probably the closest thing uh, I'll ever come to seeing an ancient city in action so far. It's really cool. And there behind me is the guy who decided to bury all the towns. It's crazy to think that you know, nearly 2,000 years ago, all of this, people's homes, there were people's shops, there were buildings, there were families spread out amongst it, and all because of one volcanic eruption, uh, it all went away. This is so cool. You can actually enter inside people's homes and in shops. And there are a lot of tourists around, but you can actually have a lot of space for yourself to explore around. It's amazing. This is an ancient form of pizza oven. <laughs> Can you believe that this building is just more than 2,000 years old and we stand on volcanic eruption? It's crazy how well preserved this place is. I mean, if you look down, you'll see an ancient form of light perfectly preserved from the volcanic eruption. That's just nuts. And behind me, we have an ancient preserved dog. <laughs> I have seen modern houses in worse conditions. We're on our way now to see if we can find the dead bodies. <laughs> We've just seen the shell of the people that were here when Vesuvius erupted. In their final moments, people were covered with an ash layer and that solidified into a husk around them. Over time, all their organs and all the mushy stuff has disappeared, has drained away leaving the skeleton inside. Uh, to preserve this outside husk, the scientists have injected the insides with plaster to keep them intact. It's actually quite sad looking at the, the way people have died. There's, it's horrible. <laughs> it would have been a horrible way to go. We're here in the amphitheater of Pompeii. It's where gladiators used to come and fight each other. They used to come and fight bears and animals and tigers and whatever. This is the main place, the main entertainment, the main show for the people of the town. And it's estimated that this amphitheater could hold 20,000 people, which is roughly the population of Pompeii. So, really cool spot. The gladiators were actually slaves of, or prisoners of war. It was very, very rare for a normal citizen to become a gladiator. But some of them, they were doing it just to research fame and glory. Would you become a gladiator? Nah, fighting hurts my face. You see up there, and you can see the different segregation between the seating areas. So your rich people and your important people used to sit down in the front. Uh, you know, the working class people and the men used to sit in the middle and your low-class people and your women, unfortunately, used to sit up the top there, so it was segregated. You can still see the truck of the horse cars in here. This platform here they were built to cross the street when it was flooding. Australia definitely needs something like this. It's cool. 
or I will have been a bit too optimistic. We thought we could do a Colonum as well in <laughs> in one day, but uh, it's like four, four thirty. So we'll just uh, keep our Colonum for tomorrow. So lesson to everyone who wants to visit Pompeii: take a full day because you will need it. It's massive and it's amazing and awesome. Yeah. All right, back towards the exit. This way. Also another tip, wear comfortable shoes or you will die. We went out to get dinner and we underestimated Napolitan food. Look at this sandwich. This bloody sandwich. Aww. Look at this one, like this is my hand with the sandwich. And we even got chips on the side. Really good though. Good morning guys, today is another day and we are in Herculanum or Herculano. Yes, so yesterday we were in Pompeii, obviously. It's a lot to see in one day, we couldn't do both sites, so we decided to visit this one today. Herculanum was buried in the same eruption. Eruption? <laughs> eruption? <laughs> like erection. You can say Get that. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> so Ercula Herculano? Herculano. Her Herculano. So this, this place behind us, Herculano, was buried in the same eruption that buried Pompeii. The same eruption of Mount Vesuvius. Uh, there's a few key differences. This one was buried a lot deeper and the material that buried this town was a different material that buried Pompeii and that means that some things are better preserved than others. Well, they're better preserved than Pompeii. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go have a look. You can see that obviously this town is buried a lot deeper than Pompeii. This one was buried about 25 metres down. Uh, Pompeii was only buried about 6 metres down. Uh, and down there, that was actually the ancient shoreline, the ancient beach, which is now obviously covered in soil. You can see the Vesuvio right there. Here's a how you enter in Heracolano. So cool. I'm so excited. There were about 300 people seeking shelter in those arches and, and alcoves when the volcano erupted. And they were there when a wave of super hot 400 degree gases swept down the mountain at 80 kilometers an hour and uh, caught them and cooked them alive unfortunately. Hopefully their deaths were quick. Uh, then after that they were buried by material and you can see their skeletons preserved nearly perfectly in the way they were when they died. Herculanum was so much smaller than Pompeii, with only 5,000 people living here, but it was much richer. In fact, it was a sort of a seaside retreat for the people from Pompeii. These things behind me are the original doors uh, from this section of the building. You can see they're blackened. Uh, I think they got hit with the heat, but they didn't actually combust into fire, which is why they've survived this long. Really cool bit of history. So the Romans were probably not very tall. And this is a tall doorway. <laughs> we'll show you a short doorway. In Herculanum you can still see the second or the third floor of some buildings. It's amazing. Like, look how this house, how well preserved is this house. So we're here underground, um, and you can see the extent of the pathways behind me. It just reveals how much is still left buried under the earth. That's it for us, gang. We have checked out two amazing places, uh, well worth a visit for sure. So if you had only one day, what would you visit? Uh, that's a tough question. <laughs>
If I only had one day, I would definitely go to uh, Ercolano because it's smaller, you can get around it easier, and uh, in terms of preservation, it's much more preserved than Pompeii. But that being said, don't just take one day, take two days and see them both because yeah. they're both very special places. We hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Don't miss the next one because we are going to explore Naples and keep road tripping around Italy. Yes, if you like this one, make sure you subscribe it, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a share, you know what to do. And we'll see you in the next one.